Now you're very welcome back. So we're turning to an issue which has really cropped up a lot in recent weeks in the GAA. Ballyholland Harps against Down Patrick, just the latest in a line of GAA matches to pop up on our phones because of brawls breaking out. Charlotte Burns was quoted as saying it was the worst he'd seen. Several minutes of players leaving the field, fighting with each other and fighting with fans. We've also had in recent weeks Stewartstown and Straban in Tyrone. We've had Slot Neal against Ballandari a few weeks ago as well, and footage has also emerged in recent weeks of referees being assaulted after a game. Over the summer, there was Armagh Tyrone under-20s as well. We have Declan Bogue from the Belfast Telegraph with us, and Enda McGinley as well, three-time All-Ireland winner with Tyrone, and on the GEA's Medical Scientific Welfare Committee. I mentioned the Slot Neal Ballandari game just to give you a sense. We're not going to play the video, but even just... I suppose the anger and the, the histrionics in the crowd and the players were right near the crowd. So here's just a sense of, of how the thing went down. Yes, yeah, so there you go. Pretty grim stuff. As I mentioned, Enda McGinley, three-time All-Ireland winner with us, and Declan Bogue as well. Declan, not somewhere you're going to routinely bring your young child if that stuff's kicking off as often as it feels to be at the moment. No, definitely not. In fact, I was having this conversation with Enda yesterday, and uh, I deliberately sort of went to players of the last decade that I admired for their courage and for, like, you know, their tough, durable characters. That included Enda and Marty McGrath and Stevie McDonald. And no one can call any of them shrinking violets. And yet all those men were appalled by what was seen over the last wee while, and nobody is happy with it. And uh, you can't say that it's in any way indicative of hard man culture or anything like this. This is nasty. This is horrible. And right now, like, I mean, <laughs> it was Dr. Niall Moyner said recently that uh, he was talking about something a little bit different in the, the style of football, but he would encourage children to go and play hurling if they were growing up in Monaghan. And for someone in Monaghan to say that they encourage their child to play hurling rather than football, it takes some going. But right now, like I don't know how you'd encourage any child to go into football if they thought that in 18 years' time when they're making their first steps into senior football, that's the kind of stuff that they'd get caught up in. We'll get on to the consequences of what can happen in these incidents in a moment, but I think it's interesting to tease out whether or not we're seeing more of them because there's more of them happening or because everybody has a mobile phone and it's very easy for us to post them up and everybody to see them. Like I was just looking back and he, Colin Keyes had a piece in 2013 where he was reflecting at that stage in the previous number of years and you know he was jogging my memory of a number of incidents like 2007 was a really bad year there were a spate of flash points. Nicky Brennan if you remember actually summoned counties to Crow Park and one of the defining images that year was of a Westmead referee lying on the ground in an intermediate club match and the players around him continued to fight, which was fairly grim. You mentioned hurling and Niall Moyna, South Tipperary senior hurling match and uh, Willie Barrett, the intercounty referee, mm -hmm. someone came on the pitch and struck him twice on the back. Antrim yep. referee Ray Matthews hospitalised in 2011 after an under-21 football game in Antrim. 2012, two Donegal players hospitalised, hospitalised. There was that Waterford hurley match between Bally Gunner and Rowan Moore involving pretty much every player on the field. So, Enda, it's happening for sure, and we're seeing a spate of them at the moment. But I wonder, is it happening more regularly than at any stage over the last 20, 30 years? I suspect it may not be happening more regularly. Yeah, I, I would fully believe that it's not happening more regularly, but uh, I'm not sure how relevant that is to, sure. to the conversation. Uh, Things happened in the past that we now don't accept anymore. Drink driving happened in the past; it was accepted. We don't drive. We we don't accept that as socially acceptable now. Teachers used to be allowed to hit children in the past; that was normal. It is definitely not acceptable now. So, what counted as okay in the GA in the past doesn't mean it it is okay now. Undoubtedly, the advent of social media, particularly WhatsApp, and its ability to just send things viral like these yeah. things are hitting the front line of national media outlets before the players are home. Yeah. That's how widespread it's going, and it is 
people are drawn to negative type things, unfortunately, and dramatic type things and sensationalist type things. You can't get in and more than that than than a than a fight on on video. Uh, so it is just it is just clickbait heaven. If 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 and we are very much living in that era. So these things go widespread and paint a paint a very a skewed picture. And I I've come across plenty, and some people have said to me, we shouldn't be talking about this. We shouldn't or criticizing the people videoing the instances, criticizing the people talking about it as if we shouldn't be. That's all well and good, but this country above all else knows that if we brush things under the carpet and ignore them and pretend that they're not happening, that does not do the situation any good at all. And, and I think we have to be big enough to address it. These are a minority thing. Like I would say there's a hundred club games happened say last weekend in Ulster. One, everybody at them games carried mobile phones. Everybody at them games were able to video clip thing. There was only one clip came up. So one percent, say roughly, but yeah. that still isn't an excuse to accept it and and pretend that it's a small thing. Yeah, Declan. Be, before we jump on to the other elements here, would you agree with Enda that it might just be a one percent, and maybe it was one percent ten years ago, and twenty years ago, and thirty years ago? You don't feel like this is on the rise, do you? There's, there's only one way to find that out, Joe, and that is to maybe take, say, from the start of this decade, five thousand referees report, and take a sample size from the ten years before that. Mm. And ultimately, as Emma said, it's entirely irrelevant. And as a matter of fact, uh, the fact that these things are popping up into people's WhatsApps on a Sunday evening or a Saturday evening makes it all the more uh, important that we do clamp down on it. Because uh, if something happened between Barry Holland and Down Patrick uh, 10 years ago, it was never heard of. Nobody in Fermanagh heard of it. Nobody in Calvin heard of it. Certainly no one in Sligo heard of it. Now it is. Everybody sees it. Mm. So therefore, because they are being recorded for posterity, this looks like a very ugly time indeed for Gaelic football. Yeah. Uh, and probably Ulster Gaelic football too, let's be honest about it. So um, whether it matters, nothing whatsoever, whether it's more prevalent or not. And uh, look, there's good reasons for all this happening. And I don't know if you want to get into it, but like, you know, the, the actual lack of people willing to accept responsibility for their actions in GA has created this culture. It is yeah. rotten, yeah, no, and nobody true. can tell me any different. No, it's true. Dunica Boyle wrote a very good piece today, and he highlighted John Milan as one of the very few who actually just accepted a ban ahead of a Munster mm. final, and he's, he's almost infamous, famous for it. So, okay, let's let we'll move on to what GA authorities can do, and that's where the hypocrisy comes in with county boards handing out bans to club players and then appealing bans for county players. You know, almost at the on the same day's work. So you, mm -hmm. you, you say there, and uh, interestingly, that you know corporal punishment, drink driving, these things were okay once upon a time, and now they're not okay. People in the media twenty years ago were saying it was outrageous. People in GAA authorities were saying twenty years ago it's outrageous. I wonder, is there much outrage actually down at grassroots level about this thing, or is it seen as sort of handbags? Because if you watch, for instance, the Bally Holland Dan Patrick video. The people recording it are almost blasé bored about it. Like, they're sort of laughing. Here we go yeah. again is kind of the stuff they're saying. I actually wrote down some of the stuff they were saying. It was, here we're going again. Or it was, ah, geez, they're all gobshites again. There was, a, there was a kind of harmless, well, this is just part of the culture. And this is, it's, it's happening again uh, feel. It was not outrage. So my sense was, well, social pressure has contributed to drink driving stopping. I'm not sure if the players will receive much social pressure from the people in the crowd, actually. Yeah, it's, it's like that, that Bally Hall, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Declan, but as far as I know, that was a refixture of a match previously yeah. played and yeah. abandoned because yeah. of a fight. So, yeah. so the people were literally saying, here we go again. Uh, for, for me, I think the GA authorities, I think anybody watching that and even hearing that audio clip that you played at the start there, like that is horrible stuff to hear. It, it, it really can affect you hearing that. I think when you see it in the cold light of day on video, it just looks terrible. Because nobody has come out with serious injuries, I think we're happy enough to pass off. Uh, and I think the GA authorities, absolutely, they, they are... They hate this and they would love to do something about it, but they have singularly failed to do it. And I still don't see any rules or any sanctions in the rule book to, to properly address it. I think the culture is that we go after individual players. We know from so many past appeals that when you go after individual players, people can usually find loopholes. So I think the sanctions need to be bigger than that. Uh, and then the other problem is that if some county board somewhere wants to go on a solo run and make a big a statement and make a dramatic sanction, well then the clubs equally can sort of fight against that 
because it's it's without precedent, if you know what I mean. So I think this has to be led. Often Central says that this is a county board matters. I think centrally uh, the GA need to take this on, bring out new sanctions that are pr more black and white, that you are chucked out of that competition uh, if you're involved in a mass brawl or if you're the instigator or, or sort of the main proponent in a mass brawl, then you're out of that competition. Yes, as we've seen in that Bally Holland down, Patrick, there was players starting back, not running in. So all players are not the same sinners, but the only thing I think will make people stand up and, and count or stand up and take notice is big sanctions being put straight out of a competition. Declan, do you want to come in on what you'd like to see happen? I'd like to see people take them. I'd like to see a complete change of uh, attitude. I mean, I just don't understand, say, for example, how a county board like Armagh could stand over uh, appealing the suspensions that arose out of their game with Tyrone under 20s. Uh, these are children, like under 20s. I and mean, no matter what you think about how big a man you are or what you can bench press, I think the summer, the, the truth was, there was a crowd of children that were fighting on uh, on a pitch and the, and the substitute bench emptied. Uh, the complete the people who are uh, there steering the game completely lost control, um, and then Armagh County Board then decided they were going to appeal it, and their manager Peter McDonald, who's a teacher, should have more wit about it, but he you know raged against all these suspensions handed down mm. against lads that were caught on camera fighting and punching. I mean, you've got now, right now, you will have seen another clip of a guy in Derry who ran up and hit a referee. And he has been handed down, well, handed down, he has been told that we wish to uh, suspend you for X amount of time by the Derry County Board. And you know what? Even though he was caught on camera doing this, his club says, no, we're not going to accept that. We're going to appeal that. Yeah. I mean, you know, unless we actually have a sea change of culture, then we're going to go nowhere. But I mean, do, there's that, just too that, many layers that, of, of, of appeal here. Yeah, doesn't that suggest maybe Ender's point is the right one, that tribalism is probably at the heart of one of the reasons there's so much violence in the GA half the time anyway. I mean, I played a lot of soccer in GA growing up, and I noticed a real distinction in the dressing rooms in, in soccer matches, football, I call it soccer at the time. In soccer matches, it was just going out and, and playing the game. In GA, it was parish against parish. It was family against family. It was doing it for the parish and all this kind of tribalism. That feeds into what we're seeing at county boards, Declan. So I would put it to you that if we haven't seen an attitude shift yet, we might just have to, as Enda is saying, take this out of the hands of county boards and do this thing centrally and properly. Because we talk about it in GA as if it's an unfixable problem. And yet sports like rugby, you know, GA is a physical sport. It happens. Sports like rugby got serious about it, did it very quickly, and it is sorted out. And so, Declan, you're calling for the attitude change. That's never going to happen. People are too self-centered and too self-serving. Yeah, you're right, Joe. Um I take back everything I said. <laughs> but Anders right is something I was advocating and advocating for in a column tomorrow is that, you know, perhaps there's a different way. There are a certain amount of people, uh, you know, there, there are tons of people who are employed professionally in the GA uh, who, are, you know, would have time. I mean, there's there's no problem setting up a disciplinary boundary at central level and you could staff it with 10 people and they could review all the video clips because most clubs now all uh, videotape their games and all the county board of the stipulation that as long as we can access it at any time. So if you take the power out of the county board's hands and you impose uh, suspension centrally, yeah, there will be a route for appeal, as there should be, mm. but it'll cut down on that thing of, of just the blatant hypocrisy of county board's appeal and then also imposing discipline on clubs. Yeah. I think the whole thing in terms of culturally, for me, yes, it was that under-20 incident between the throne and Armagh, but by far and away, this is primarily a club issue. I think and it hits on a point you mentioned, Joe. Club, it is very, very personal in them dress rooms. It is very personal. That's what make it. That's what makes it what it is. Like I've seen a load of club football this this last sort of six weeks, and it, what it does for communities, what it means to the teams, it is just absolutely phenomenal. And that's why it's so good. That's why we're so proud of it. Yeah. But equally, when that goes too far, there is problems. Like in, and when we talk about culture, this is a club thing. The CPA for me, has been exceptionally silent on this as well. And if the CPA, if, if there was club games being cancelled, the CPA would be out saying we're putting at risk the club game. Well, they're not exactly been coming forward too much and representing their members in terms of this, which for me is a bigger problem within the club game than the county game. And we are all so proud of our club game. But if there's a problem in it, there's no point ignoring it. We'll have to address it and try to see if we can get that balance between our the manly, spirited, 
pride in the Jersey club football, which is the bedrock and which we all love. But from this, it, it is essentially hooliganism is what it is. Like, and we, we've seen, unfortunately, what happened to like, Sean Cox, the, the Liverpool fan. We all know how we reacted when we heard that story. We thought that that's just thugs, that's hooliganism. That is what is happening on the pitches whenever these rows break out. Yes, it is a tiny, tiny minority of games that goes to this level. But for me, people need to catch themselves on and respect the club game that we're so proud of and just pull back from, from the brink before something something happens. And that is the point you made in Declan's piece. And it's really, I think it's captured some headlines today. So as well as you know your exploits on the field, you're a clinical specialist, uh, physiotherapist with Southern Trust in trauma and orthopedics. And frankly, you talked, you know, players are stronger than ever. They're in gym routines. You mentioned Sean Cox, who was struck twice. Frankly, I mean, you, you've put it out there and you've said one punch fatalities. They happen. And if they happen on a GAA field and we haven't dealt with this problem, then shame on everyone in the association, really. Yeah, un un unfortunately, it, it can happen. They are freak incidents. But if, if we're not, for me, just if, if we're not clamping down properly or if players aren't catching themselves on, then whenever the red mist descends, you do not know what will happen. If you go back to the drink drive, and if you take a drink and drive, you don't know what's happening uh, at the end result, and you are responsible. And as players on the pitch, like they are, you, you see players stripped off now, and they are serious, powerful men. And when the red mist descends and they're swinging uh, punches, as, as we have seen, even though it's a tiny minority, it, it can bad things can happen and, and trying to ignore it or trying to say it won't uh, won't cure that uh, like you don't want to be sensationalist there is no point in being sensational as I said I've probably seen about nine club championship games over the past number of weeks not one punch have I seen thrown yeah. so these yeah. are tiny incidents but that is not a good enough reason to ignore it when it is so serious. Well if we're talking about 1% there are so many matches happening that 1% is still a number of matches um, and and yeah, a one punch fatality. I, I, it can just. It depends where you're caught in the head. Is it about the force? It can just happen, Enda. Yeah, I don't. I don't un understand them fully. But yes, the, the skull obviously has has its number of weak points. But you also don't know a person's previous medical history. You don't know the condition of that person's blood vessels within their brain or within their neck. So you don't know when you're unleashing that punch if you're doing it with venom. And as I was saying to Declan, like. There's no point trying to say us in the past were never involved in rows. Of course we're involved in rows, and I, I was involved in rows too, and you sort of were, were throwing a few punches. But for me, there was always a difference between the venom you were throwing. You were throwing a punch, and it was as much trying to stand up for yourself and sort of put manners on a fella. But there's a difference in the venom that, that you can throw a punch. And if you throw a punch with power, particularly, as I say, with the condition of the modern L, modern footballers yeah. there you can do untold damage and uh, as I say ignorance is ignorance or culture or luck I, I was just caught in the middle of it or the, the the red mist had descended none of them are excuses if if, if something did happen yeah Declan I mentioned 2007 and Nicky Brennan summoning counties and talking to them about a spate of flashpoints at that stage we're now another 10 11 12 years on are we finally ready to kind of move with the times here and really stamp this thing out or Will we, um, I don't know, muddle along and a few years go by and suddenly there's a raft of videos again and we, 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 we get you two on to say here we are again? I don't know if it's, uh, I think it's uh, not a, I don't think it's a, a thing about stamping it out and there, that's now, that is the problem solved. I think this is something that, uh, you know, the GA need to be eternally vigilant about and they need regular uh, seminars with county boards maybe every six months to review how many incidents are in referees reports, how they can uh, how they can diminish the numbers, how they can work on getting that. I mean, you know, I was at the Monaghan County Final there on Sunday and it, it brought to mind something that Marty McGrath said about uh, this culture is that he said when you started playing football, you were able to go in hard and fair and there was an awful lot of physical contact and referees let it go. And that in some ways that allowed you an expression of the physical sense of all this passion that we have for our clubs, right? Mm. But 
now it is an awful lot of that that is taken out that if you go in hard and fair there will be someone will be crying for a free and the tension builds and builds throughout the game I was at the Monon County final and uh, you had an awful lot of big men like Doran and Kieran Hughes and the Wileys and so on up against each other and it was it was sort of a throwback neither manager had a sweeper it was man on man and it was an awful lot of tough tackle now the referee uh, was absolutely brilliant like it's not too often that a referee's before will catch the eye but a couple of times where he could have possibly t- t- been tempted to use the black card to use the yellow card and the game was so much better as a result because he let a, a level of physicality go and probably that is reflected in how Monaghan County team play their football too which goes to show that if this aggression is allowed to be to vent in a certain way in an appropriate way then we have an awful lot good with Gaelic football in fact you know, Rory Began, a man who can kick the football from the 14 metre line to the moon, didn't get the ball past the 45 metre line at one point. Mm. He was kicking into such a strong wind. So that gives you some idea about how uh, misguided some of these rules recommendations are. But to, to, to go back to the original point, like, you know, Gaelic football is meant to be played as an aggressive sport. There is meant to be a certain level of contact in it. And, you know, because we have moved away from that in recent years because we have an awful lot of people grabbing arms, falling down, trying to buy freeze and that. We are getting into a situation where players are more touchy on field and thereby, you know, incidents can occur like this. And a final word to you. So then to sum up, so this is kind of a solution-based argument and and conversation as opposed to just um, veering into sensationalism, which I know you don't want to do. Your argument at this point is maybe we do need to centralise this whole situation and to clamp down on it, proper suspensions, a rigorous disciplinary process and appeals process. Because, you know, if we extend the drink-driving analogy, a lot of people didn't like not being able to have a few drinks and driving home, but ultimately the law changed their habits and in the GEA, that just hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I think think that's a fair point. Like, going back to the sort of club football, it is... It has been so brilliant, like all the football I've seen this last while, it has just been immense and what it does for communities is immense and that's built on that pride and passion. I think we scuffles might always break out, that'll be part and parcel, I don't think there's any issue. I think the the issue here and what we've seen in the video clips that has spread is this sense of a melee, this sense of complete loss of control, this all-in mentality where people lose the run of themselves and I think we need to realise that them situations are so massively dangerous It is not acceptable as an association to even tolerate them in any sort of semblance. I think we need to get on top with appropriate sanctions to nip that in the bud because the previous sanctions used over the 20, 30, 40 years previously have not worked because it's still there. It is much more obvious now because of social media. People can say that's a bad thing, painting us in a bad light. We can turn that and make it a good thing that we're really showing how bad this is. And so we take definitive steps to now stop it and go back to the brilliant club game as Declan talks with all the passion and all the fire and yes maybe an occasional scuffle when when boys lose the head but not this completely dangerous unacceptable thuggish hooliganism which is what we're seeing which can just result in terrible consequences okay and McGinley thank you Declan where can people read the piece tomorrow oh um Belfast Telegraph uh, and the Irish Independent, if they, they fancy taking it up. I suspect I they know. might. I suspect they might. Uh, Declan Bogue, thank you. Andy McGinley, thanks, lads. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Joe.